I want to thank you guys for allowing me to come in here and speak. Um, yeah, 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 that's good. I want, to thank, I want to thank you guys for, for this time. I know you guys don't have much time and you could be other places, but you're here. And you've taken the time to come in here and listen to this word. God has put this word on me that I'm, that I'm going to talk to you about so deep in my heart that I'm like, you can't go to spring break until you hear this word. Look at somebody next to you say, I can't go. I can't go. I can't go to spring break until I hear this word. This is what I'm going to ask you too. I like to be a little bit more comfortable. How many people have been in Igo? Raise your hand if you've been to Igo. Why haven't you been to Igo? you got to come in. Come see us. Come visit us. Um, Mike, if you would stand up. Stand up, Mike. Woo! Is JP in here? Where's J JP? Stand up. Let's give him a round of applause. If you're a part of the IGO team, stand up. Come on, come on, yes. God has put it on my heart to have a sense of belonging to create belonging, right? And that's what we do in the IGO office. So we don't want you to think that you're excluded. What kind of stuff is that? Today I'm going to be talking to you about a subject that I feel like we need to come in and, and sit next to the campfire here just a little bit. So if you would, if you feel comfortable, make your way up here and you can sit because I'm going to come down here and talk. So if you would, I know I go people better be up here a little bit. Let's go, let's go. Anybody, anybody, come on right here. This is what I would like for you to do. I remember years ago, there used to be this war between the iPhone and the Android. There used to be a war. Like in 2008, 2010, people that would speak in chapel, they say, hold up your phone if you have an iPhone. So I want you to do that right now. I want you to hold up your phone if you have an iPhone. Let's go. Turn the light on. Wave that thing. Be proud of it. Let's go. Woo! Turn around. Look, God. Hey, I feel the Holy Spirit right here. This is amazing. All right. Put him down. Put him down. Raise your phone up if you have an Android. All the judging going on. Android people, stand up. Be proud. Be proud. What happened to Android? I don't understand. Back in the day, let me tell you about this. Back in the day, it was cool because I remember I first got my first uh, smartphone, John Yale, right? And I'm sitting there going, oh, this is really cool. I had an Android because that was what was cool at the time, right? So I get my Android out, and I'm like, okay, I want to download this app. And you go to download it, what would happen? Can't download it because it only goes with what? Apple. I was like, man. But then you go to Apple and they want to charge you like $25.99 for the same app that you could get like a bootleg version of it, right? On the other side, right? And I'm like, what's going on? Why can't I download this? What's going on, right? And what I realized is that you have to have something called an OS. Is it up there? Downloading a new OS. What is an OS? operating system your operating system right allows you to download certain apps if you don't have the correct operating system you ain't downloading them apps I got to tell you a little bit I hope this isn't is this too much for you guys because I'm just being fully myself and let me tell you something it was funny because last week there was a speaker that came in here Austin was it and I knew him from growing up and I walked up here, and I was like, hey, man, what's up, man? He was like, oh, he's like, do I know you? And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, what's your name? I said, Mari. He goes, Wrangle? It's really Rangel, but everybody says Wrangle, right? Wrangle? And I go, yeah. He goes, you was one of them bad dudes. You was trying to kick everybody's butt, hanging out with the Mendezes and the Yanneses and the Dixons and all this other stuff. And I'm like, hey, man, quiet. Andrew Summers right here, man, you know? And she said, he said, no, 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 I'm telling everybody you're dirt. And then this is what he said. I said, he goes, you saved? And I said, that's me, baby. 
I got a new operating system. I don't think you heard that. I don't think you heard that, that I got a new operating system. So the way that I think, it's crazy because God's not, God might have got me out the streets, but the streets are still in here with God. And that's the way I talk, that's the way I preach, this is me fully. And I'm so happy to embrace this. And this is what I want for you guys to do, is to realize that there's an operating system that God wants to download into you so you can get the right apps. Romans chapter 12, it talks about renewing the what? Oh my gosh, did you guys take class? Renewing the what? Renewing the what? Everybody reach up and grab your cabeza, grab your head, your mente, right, your mind, and say, I'm going to download a new operating system just in time before spring break. <laughs> just in time before spring break. And Romans chapter 12, if I was to read through it, it gives us some commands. Because in the first few chapters, what it says is it says, this is how you can get saved. This is the way to salvation. Then when you get into the second parts of Romans, what it talks about, it says, there's some responsibility for you to do here now. So that means that I'm able to respond. I don't think you heard that. Responsibility, I don't want a responsibility, man. Responsibility hard. You are able to what? If you are able to respond, that means you have power. You see how this operating system is being downloaded now? You are responsible. Here's what you're responsible for. To give yourself. Say give. Not to copy the world. Matter of fact, it says don't copy the world, we're going to get into that here in a minute. Don't copy. Say, don't copy. Allow God to transform you. Say, I need to allow. I need to change the way I think. Say, change. And then I need to learn. Through the changing of the mind, that's where you learn his ways. His good, pleasing, and what? Perfect ways. I lived my life growing up hard, you guys, hard. It was very, very difficult. And there's a certain way that I thought. And, I'm, I, you know, I grew up, I was like, when I met my wife, give her a hand, give her a hand. I had my wife, my, grand, my granddaughter's here too, Mia. Say what's up to Mia. I grew up, and what I used to think, man, is like we didn't have curtains. We would literally put blankets up and nail them things to the windows. Why buy a curtain? I got two blankets. I'm going to use this thing, right? I didn't know why we had two sheets. I'm like, you only need one. What's the other one going to do? Get that thing out of here. I didn't understand things. Well, here's another one. I'm going to read some of these that get a little bit deeper. I thought marriage was temporary. I thought marriage was for people that want to fight and just hate on each other. Like, I don't think you guys are understanding me. Like, legitimately, that's what I thought. Because of my operating system, I thought people that had money were evil, and they were just made there to keep the man down. Now I got a little money in my pocket. Guess what I'm doing? I'm giving it. I'm giving it up. What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? I don't believe in welfare either, so this is what I say. How can you, you come over, help me a little bit? I'll take care of you. I thought that religion was for weak men. Somebody's better say, well, say well. Thank you. You know, oh yeah. I literally thought that it was for weak men. I remember looking up at my dad, man, and my dad's a great, great man. But he, he's working on his salvation at this point. And I remember looking up at him as a little niño. I would look up and I'd see my dad standing like this for prayer. And I remember trying to mock that same thing. This ain't for me. Nothing could be further from the truth because I had the wrong operating system, right? Another thing I thought, I thought that conflict was equals, equals physical altercation. We had an incident last night, we went to go look at this car 
Stand up, my godson. Stand up here. You guys give Chris a hand. We went to go look at this car for him because we taught him. He came out. He came out. We made it, bub. We made it. He came out too, and I said, look, this is what you got to do with your money. This is, what you, this is what the word says. This is the new operating system. So now he got money. He said, I'm going to go check out this car. We get up there, but the guy that was selling the car brought two people at the same time to look at the car at the same time. And these dudes get up, and they was heated, and they came after Chris, and they were like, hey, we're looking at this first. And I see this going on, and I kind of crack my window a little bit. And then I hear, I'm like, I see the body language. I'm like, I know that body language. I step out, and I start stepping, right? And I'm like, I go like this, look, look, hold up, hold up, hold up. I walk over there, and I say, oh, my son-in-law got it. This is my, my other daughter's husband. And they were taking care of business, so I stepped back. When we were walking, we were driving away, we handled it like gentlemen, didn't we? And when we were going away, this man told me, he said, look, I remember how it was back in the day. Like, you get heated and you was ready to take the shirt off and throw down, right? But this is what he said. He says, man, that's not worth my character. I'm so glad I didn't do it. And I said, son, you have learned so much because let me tell you, listen, everybody, ears right here. You must listen to this. Your reputation is your street credit. Do you understand what I'm meaning? Your reputation is more valuable than gold and silver. I had that wrong. And let me share this one with you. And I put this one on here, and I almost scratched it out like ten times. That's when I realized I still have a problem with it. And let me tell you, every once in a while, there's going to be a virus that tries to pop in on the operating system. And this is it. I was a waste because I'm biracial. That's hard for me to say. Incredibly hard for me to say. Didn't know where I fit in trying to grow up. Am I Mexican enough? Am I white enough? What in my identity? I said, man, I need to get my identity in Christ. That's where I need to be. You see, our brain is this collection, an archive. It's an archive of every memory that you have. And those memories are often associated, the best memories and the worst memories are often associated with some of the worst or best emotions that we feel. I can remember the, my wife's face the day we got married. I can remember my daughter's dimples when she was born. But I could also remember and hear the fighting that went on in my house and some other things. And those emotions are tied so deep that they're so hard to get out. And what happens is this. Now you have this incident that happens and it's stamped by all this emotion. Now the emotion starts creating this attitude, which is just basically like, like this temporary thing. Like you got a bad attitude today, girl, you need to quit. Or man, that person's got a, a great attitude. Best attitude in, in IW is Jonathan Panzu right here. Always got a great attitude, yes. I think I said this before, but it's like, It'd be a tornado coming in here. He'd be like, well, at least we're all together. You know, that's him, right? Those attitudes over time, though, start to create a belief, a belief system. That belief system is what I'm talking about as far as the operating system. Raise your hand if, I, if you're hearing me today. So this is the challenge. I want us to try to be able to identify the difference between God's operating system and the enemy's operating system. I want you to be able to identify the difference between God's operating system and the enemy's operating system. Why did I say the enemy and not your own? Because let me, let's, not, let's not fool ourselves here. Let's not fool ourselves. You living for God or you're living for the enemy. There is no living for yourself. Is that too harsh? And I've tried the other way. It was so hard. Constantly confused. Always having turmoil. And I had to face some things, which we'll talk about here in just a minute, right? So how can I tell? I'm just going to give you a few that God put on my heart. Here's the first one. If you're writing this down, write this down. Fakeness. Fakeness. On the street, they used to say, man, you a fraud, man. You're an imposter. 
I can't tell you how many times I talk with young people between the ages of 15 and 25 who come into my office and they're being fake. They're taking on somebody else's identity. They're trying to fit into pop culture. And let me tell you what that looks like. Get some volunteers up here real quick. Come on. Run up here. Come on. I need, I need like six of y'all. Give it up for them. You guys are just here. Just in here. Look at these strong men, young lady. Isn't that cool? Watch. Now, you guys just kind of mix up like this. I right? just kind of walk around like we, we, this, is, this is what happens, okay? We're just kind of moving around. And what happens is, is, is I'm walking through life, right? And I have free will. How many people know we have free will, right? But I want to tell you something that, the, that the God, God downloaded in my spirit and I want you to be aware of. Check this out. As I'm, I've got free will, but I'm walking through life and I'm getting bumped. I'm getting bumped by all this pop culture, right? Everybody wants me. It's hard. So it's almost like I'm sitting in this river and I'm trying to get some air. Where's God at? Where's God at? Oh, oh, I'm trying to get to God. I'm trying to do the right thing. But pop culture, it keeps confusing me. It keeps me locked up into this river. Freeze. And this is what God will do. He'll freeze it up. And you look up. And what happens is this. When I go fishing, I get down on the river, and I'm just, it's, it's, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, and it's hard. And I'm like, I, I know the fish are over there, it's hard. But what do I do, Krico? What this is what I'll do is I'll find a rock. And I'll stand up on that rock. And I'll get up and I'll say, you know what, now I'm able to see. I'm able to see what's going on around on me. Some of you guys don't realize how much pop culture has just leaked onto your spirit. And it's ingrained in your spirit and it's taken over your mind. And the problem is, is we get so deluded that we really think that we know we are this small on the timeline of God. Just a, just a, just, just a, just a mark of this timeline that goes on and on and on. But yet we think we're all knowing. We don't know much at all. But I know somebody... And it's the rock that I could stand on and say, this rock knows. And when all else fails, I know I could come right back to this rock, stand on it, and say, you know what, God? You got me. You got my back. And suddenly all this stuff. So now here's what happens, though, is that I need to reach down and grab somebody else and pull them up on this rock. Right? I got a job to do. Turn to somebody and say, I got a job to do. Your job wasn't just to get saved. Your job, if that was the case, as soon as you got saved, you go to heaven. There's a role for us to do here, and it's called activate. Say activate. We need to activate. So we go through and we pull people up on this rock with us. The problem is that this gets dirty. It's like I like this little rock to myself. But it gets, you pulling people up and it gets hard. Right, mama? I come home and there's always somebody new at my house. I'm like, hey, what's up? And that's just our mission. That's what God's called us to do, but it gets hard sometimes. Sometimes they get out of my house, man. Trying to watch. But, but it, it doesn't work that way. Serving is hard, and you pull them up, but you first got to take care of yourself. I see so many people too, right? They're trying to go out there and take care of everybody else, but you, you ain't got yourself right. Give them a hand. <laughs> Say, don't be fake. I remember reading in the Bible the first time I read this, man, it was like David and Goliath, man. That was the first story. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to check this out. This little man come up. He's ready to scrap. He goes, he's like, ah, ah. He walks up. He's like, where's he at? And what's, what's Saul do? Anybody remember what Saul did? Anybody remember? Who said that? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> he tried to put on the armor. On to David. David. You know, Saul's probably walking around. It's like me putting on Mike's clothes, right? It's like, it's like, man, this ain't this ain't gonna work. How's this gonna work? And what's he look like? He looks stupid, right? You walking around trying to be somebody else. 
big old helmet. You're trying to see out the holes. You're like, I teach Taekwondo, and it, sometimes people get hit in the head in the helmet. The helmet will spin. You like looking out of the back. That's what it'd be like. It's like, man, this is trying to pick up that sword. Everything's hard and heavy. It's a burden to try to be somebody else. It looks foolish, and people can see it even though you think, oh, they don't know. Yes, they do. Say, don't be a fake. Here's the next one. You want to be authentic, though. Let me tell you that. Be you. When you're authentic, people trust you. People trust you. You can get a lot more done if you just be you. Be the best version of yourself, though, because I hate when people are like, I just say it the way it is. It's like, no, you, you're just not taking the time to have some grace and mercy and choose words that are intelligent. Right? So don't be that person either. Be, be the best version of yourself. Can I get an amen? Next one. This is it. I call this the bare minimum. The bare minimum person. This is the clock watcher. The goof off. In the Navy, we used to call this the skater because this guy would work harder getting out of work than he would actually work. You find him drinking a pop, you know, behind, down at the bottom of the ship. It's like, what are you doing here, man? We're supposed to be cleaning these floors. That's called a skater. We called him a skater, a goof off. The bare minimum person, right? They give the least amount. And this is what upsets me about that is because I see this sometimes in my classroom. Eh, Mr. Mario, man, they just, you know, that, that professor just, you know, they just, they just hard on me. I say, oh, man, you poor baby. You want me to lower the rim for you so you can get the ball in the rim? It's like, no, we got work to do. Now, there are real issues, but most of it's not. Is that okay to say? I don't want you to be a bare minimum Christian. I want you to be a soldier. A soldier's discipline. A soldier gets up in the morning and says, you know what, I'm going to comb my hair, brush my teeth, put the word of God in my chest, and I'm walking out the door and I'm going to change some lives. Now that sounds adventurous, doesn't it? Bare minimum, nah. Change lives. Activate. Say activate. The bare minimum person is always looking to be offended too. I'm so sick and tired of victim-minded people. Now you can clap. You can clap. That is not what God called us to be. He gave us a sound mind, clear thinking with power that can move and change lives. I used to tell my girls, I said, don't you dare complain. I don't care if they put the wrong pickles on your cheeseburger. When you go back up there, don't you complain. Just say, hey, I, could I get this changed? I said, because, listen, if you complain, what it does is it makes you, can I just say it? This is why I used to tell my kids, and this may be harsh, man, but, you know, hey, they got it. Listen to the intent of the message. I used to say, it makes you ugly. It makes you an ugly person. And this is what I taught my kids. You do what you want. Then I'd say this, too. It cuts off your blessing. You might get what you get right then. But future on down the road, you cut off your long-term blessing. Don't look to be offended. We're looking around like we, done, like we lost our iPhone. Man, I know I got that. I keep losing my AirPods, don't I? I got one AirPod right now. I look, I'm searching all over that thing. Trying, ding, 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 ding. I'm like, is it over here? Where is this thing at, right? I'm doing this, and this is the way people look to be offended. Well, they just didn't do it. It's like, what? This is one of the biggest lessons I learned when I was in psychology, too. Like, and also, Heather Allen gave me a book. I can't remember what it is. How many knows Heather Allen? Yeah. She gave me this book, and I can't remember what it is, but it taught me that there's the locus of control. How many people raise your hand if you know what this is? Okay, locus of control. This locus of control, the inside is what you can control. The outside are things you can't control. Focus on what you can control. And sometimes that's nothing but a good attitude. So let me give you these three, these four things, and then we're gonna, I'm going to invite the uh, worship team to come back up, please. And you guys can go ahead and make your way. Write this down. If you got it, say evaluate. you got to get in the mirror, look deep into the mirror, and self-reflect and say, who's really there? Evaluate. Second thing is you need to change your environment. Say environment. Why, was, why did I have that such a, a, a bad operating system in the beginning? Because of my environment. That's the nature-nurture combo, right? Say I need to experience diversity. 
I need to experience diverse dimensions, not just in color. I need to be around other people. If I said raise your hand if you have somebody in your phone that looks different than you, acts different than you, has less money than you, do you have a person like that in your phone? And here it is. Say expand opportunities. Expand opportunities. I'm going to challenge you with this. Until you get out there and you expand and experience, you're going to stay stuck in the same rut. I'm asking you to visit a church that may test you. To walk into a barbershop where there's people not like you. Maybe even visit a retirement home. There's people out there that need it. And maybe go to a place where maybe you don't feel the most comfortable. And let this kind of shake up your mind. And remember that God wants you to download his operating system, Jesus Christ. Once you get that operating system downloaded, from there on, it's going to be good apps. You're going to look at education different. You're going to look at money different. You're going to look at relationships different. If what I said today spoke to you, I want you to stand up. And as they're singing this song, Great Are You, great are you Lord, as they're singing this song, I'd just like for you to lift your hands just lift your hands, even if it's just this high, I don't care. Just reach them out because you need this before spring break. <laughs> and I just ask you to take a moment, I turn this over, just to pray and ask God for this word to be activated into your soul, into your spirit, into your mind.